you on um, speaker view? I'm on Do gallery it. view now. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good. What's up, everyone? All Welcome right. back. Episode three. Yeah. First two went well, and now they've given me the reins to do it on my channel. So hopefully we can figure it out as well. Sorry, we're a few minutes late, but we are back. Yeah, episode three. And uh, as you can tell, there's uh, we're, we're missing somebody. wonder where he went. <laughs> what if he escaped and went ninja fishing? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, more than fishing couldn't make it this time. So you're stuck with us too for today. So <laughs> we're carrying on the torch. Carrying the weight. There you go. Oh, shoot. We have 35 people watching. Nice. Look at us. Hey, look at us. Um, yeah, so what's up, guys? Episode three, we're actually on a cadence now. Look at that. We, uh, we're down one YouTuber. We got one background. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll be legit and we'll, we'll make this work. But um, yeah, today, thanks for, if you're on Adam, well, obviously you're on Adam's channel. So as you notice, this show has bounced around. Uh, episode was one was on mine. Episode two was on June's. Adam's uh, got the reins for number three. So we're still trying to figure out what works. But we all, I think, for the most part, have like a shared user base. And so we figure most of you guys that watch us regularly will find us. So um, yeah, we were actually thinking of maybe dedicating a whole channel just to the show because who knows how long it's going to last. But as long as there's a lockdown, I think there's definitely um, an audience and uh, a need for this kind of show because frankly, I mean, things are slowing down and people you know, want to know what's going on. They want to know if they can fish. And I feel like between June, myself and Adam, uh, we have enough kind of contacts and inroads with people that do it regularly um, that we could let you know if you can fish if or where you could fish if you wanted to. Um, not that you should, not that you shouldn't. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the impetus of the Shelter Show. So um, Adam, you're our host. What are we doing? What are we talking about? All right. So first off, and give, forgive me, it's my first time hosting this fabulous show. So I apologize in advance, but anyway, we'll keep it going here. So first off, let's let's get the latest ish. I know you're our COVID nineteen uh, <laughs> specialist, so let's hear let's hear the latest. Yeah, man. So you know, gosh, unfortunately, I've been I've been right. So when this <laughs> <laughs> when when this you know, just hold on, Gene's not here to pat me on the back. Not that he ever does. So I'll pat myself. Um, okay, so this is what. This, long story short. We are still, um, in, we're still kind of flying blind. We've got our, you know, we've got our eyes wrapped and we're, we're walking towards, I feel like this cliff and we just don't know when it's going to hit. So back in February, March, when they started kind of, you know, rolling out these uh, ordinances um, and started kind of scaling back on business and, and stuff, um, man, I, personally, I could see. I could see like the, the three to four month window. I knew that two weeks wasn't going to make a difference when they said everyone um, stay in place for two weeks. Um, schools are closed for two weeks. I was like, well, you look at the models of the countries that are um, tackling it head on are super affected like Italy and China. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, the companies that have it under control like South Korea, we are in this for the long haul. So you guys are watching the news just like I am, but if you're not or not in tune with the uh, CDC and John Hopkins, basically, um, you know, we're at this point where we are still at this super steep peak where uh, incline where we're not projected to hit this peak yet till about, I think, mid to late May. Um, and I could just, I could just see it like unfolding. Like when they said that we were only going to be in place for two weeks, I was like, no, nah, man, we're going to be in this for like three to four months. So my opinion is that we are at the beginning, maybe like a little more towards the middle of this systematic three to more three to four month minimum uh, shelter in place ordinance. Uh, my kids school, for example, um, when they first said, hey, we're going to we're going to we're going to adjust schedules for this. Everyone um, don't come to school for two weeks. I was like honey, talking to my wife, uh, our kids aren't going to go to school for the rest of the year. We got to prepare as parents to homeschool these kids, to provide for them, to protect for them. Um, let's get our finances, let's get our um, education materials, let's get our work materials in place to be living out of our home for, um, you know, three or four months with limited access to the outdoors. So, um, 
that's what's happening. You know, I mean, you saw, everyone saw that um, in California, if you're watching from California, if you have kids, um, schools are closed for the remainder of the year. So you'll still have your curriculum, um, but the campuses are closed. Um, I think the current California shelter in place ordinance is extended through May 3rd. It makes no sense to have people go back to work with their kids out of school through the end of June. Personally, I think they're going to have the shelter in place till at least um, early June, mid June. And I've been saying that since they first initiated it in um, February. And so for those of you hurting or don't believe it, I, I would just, you know, take this uh, advice with, uh, with, with wholeheartedness, you know, be prepared to have that shelter in place extended through mid June, um, you know, for countries like, like China that totally like fell apart when this whole thing unraveled. It's a, uh, 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 it's a, you know, totally locked down country, and they still got hit pretty bad. Um, South Korea on the other end, you know, they're ahead of it. And uh, business is still going ongoing, but it's, it's very slow. Uh, and so I think the United States, because we are um, 50 states, we're like 50 little countries, um, the governors for each state, were asked to independently manage their own states. And so because of that, there is no unified front for this. And so I think because of that, um, Gavin Newsom errs on the side of extreme caution. He was like the first guy uh, to initiate a state lockdown. I think California was the first, um, Bay Area was I think ahead of the curve there. And so I think uh, with that trajectory and that kind of planning and that kind of um, authority in place, really think that we're, whatever you're experiencing today, I think we're gonna be experiencing it for the next two months minimum. So I'm kind of preparing myself to, to be sheltered in place for the next two months. So not to, not to scare you guys, but um, I don't know. I, I think if you have a family, you are hyper aware of what's gonna happen, what's gonna affect uh, you know, your kids, your, your, your uh, you know, better half and uh, yourself as far as work and, and food and, and, and planning and all that stuff. So that's, that's my position. Um, you know, maybe the, the comments don't really, the people watching don't care about that, but, but I mean, that's, that's our lives right now and that affects uh, yeah. fishing. So, so yeah, so yeah, let's hear the, the conversation towards what the people really want to hear about. And uh, can we go fishing through all of this? I don't know. So as far as this video or as, you know, as of today, fishing is still allowed here in California. I've heard that some other states are actually banning it, um, but here, it's still allowed recreational fishing that is um, the only things that are inhibiting that or one of the few things is a all the like parking lots are closing beach parking lots all the harbors are closing so um, if you're well if you're on my channel which you are you might have seen that I posted a video today I went out in the kayak because I was still able to that there was literally no boats I only saw two boats out there the whole day and both of them were Department of Fish and Game Boats. So, um, so yeah, it's becoming harder to fish, but it's the if you can get out, it's still legal as of now. So, yeah, so yeah, if you can, it's, it's kind of prime prime time right now because there's not much fishing pressure. So, um, so yeah, there's that. Yeah, hopefully you guys can see this, but um, this is the Rockaway parking lot, right? So the beach is still accessible, but the parking lot is closed. This is the parking lot at uh, Pacifica Pier, right there by Sharp Park Beach. You can go on the beach, but it is locked down and closed. Um, all the parking lots in that area. Um, yeah, all the tackle shops, if they're not closed already, um, they're closed because of you know the lack of business, obviously. I took my family out for a long drive, um, kept them in the minivan, but you know we didn't go outside of the car just to get outside and go somewhere. It's really weird when you're locked down, you don't like go out your gate and just do something like literally my life has been confined to like you know the the, the confines of the, the 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 property we live on and um i was like let's just go for a drive and let's just see the coast for ourselves so pile the kids and the family into the minivan we headed up um, 280 went down um a one down to uh the pier um, there were people walking along the beach, but ne not nearly as many for a Saturday. There was lots of parking, but all the parking lots were closed. The pier is closed. Um, I didn't see anybody fishing on um, Sharp Park Beach. Um, then we took uh, one, we continued down south. We swung by Rockaway. All the parking lots there were closed. The one in front of the, the Luna restaurant, the picture I just showed you, the main parking lot, that's closed. We went up the hill and over to Lindemar. Even from the top of the hill, 
all the way down to the Taco Bell, both sides of one are blocked off. Um, there oh, wow. were like, I'd say like 20 people on the beach, but I got to imagine those are residents just, you know, crossing the street, a couple people surfing, I think two guys fishing. I went through, um, you know, the tunnel over to Montera, San Gregorio, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Montera and, and, you know, to the airport. Uh, Montera, that whole stretch um, was taped off. Um, there were people on the beach, but they were parking in the residential areas across the street. Uh, that restaurant um, was uh, obviously closed. I went all the way down to um, the jetty area and uh, Pillar Point. The Pillar Point parking lot, lot and ramp all closed. Um, the jetty area is taped off. I didn't see anyone on the jetty on a Saturday. Um, that entire RV park was closed. I saw a few surfers out there. Um, and just kept driving and everywhere I went, all the major um, state beaches obviously were gated off. And if there was like a, uh, an area where you would want to fish or even go crabbing, it was taped off. So they did a good job of really limiting where you could park. So, yeah, we live in this time, we're in this weird gray area where fishing technically is still legal, but to get to these um, uh, popular places, these high traffic areas, um, it, it's very difficult to park. And I haven't heard about anyone getting ticketed about being there or, or for fishing. So, um, yeah, I think you still can fish, but you know, they're just making it difficult for you to access your, your common fishing places. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I was checked twice by DFG when I was out there because there's no boats, I'm assuming. So, I mean, they have no one else to check except for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, I, I talked to them a little bit and they were saying that, yeah, I mean, fishing is still legal there there's no problems with it but but yeah like we were saying like ish was saying is it's just getting out there all the like um, amenities that you would normally have that would help you get out there are closing down so becoming yeah. increasingly difficult yeah here. so yeah so you know um you know people ask me like people like dm me every day like asking me like <laughs> where they can go fishing or if they should get fishing my position is you know Fishing is still legal and fishing like people that fish regularly, they are not like everyone else in like an act, like in most active sports where you are in close contact with people. Fishing is like uh, I, a thing I do for solitude. I get away from people. I'm just like that person that is like, you know, walking on a trail all by themselves. I'm like that runner that's jogging by themselves, just looking for peace. So I consider myself that kind of person. Um, and so I don't know. It's like, I don't want to be the person to say go, but I also don't want to be the person that says don't go. If and when we get to a point like in Washington where they just completely banned uh, recreational fishing, of course, like I'll err on the side of, of, um, of uh, you know, what, what the state is telling you to do, but I can't sit here and say, hey guys, don't go fishing, um, knowing that by the letter of the law, you still are allowed to. And if I did say, hey, guys, you should go fishing. Now the time's to go. All these seasons are, are, are you know, coming up. Um, of course, there's a lot less boat traffic, obviously. Um, if you're a kayaker, go launch before, you know, um, the boats come back. But then I would be encouraging you guys to be in proximity of other people when the etiquette nowadays and the directive is to stay away from people and don't, you know, go out. So, yeah, we're in this w weird point where, um, honestly, like, I can't, I don't want to say either way. I would say do what your conscience is telling you. If you don't want to go out, you feel like you shouldn't go out, then don't go out. But if you absolutely have to go out, by the letter of the law, you can. I, I, I've heard stories of people getting ticketed just for being out and about without, um, you know, by pursuing non-essential um, uh, business or pursuits. But I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's true or if that's just stuff that, you know, I'm reading on Facebook that's false. So, yeah, we're, we're like in this kind of weird purgatory right now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, well, <laughs> speaking of fishing, um, yeah, if we can, uh, just switch gears here to what, uh, you know, what we're all accustomed to doing, I thought you posted a pretty cool, uh, video there. Congratulations yeah. on the, on the first keeper. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I feel like I was the only one that caught a link caught in like, I don't know, maybe a hundred mile radius. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when I saw the Instagram post, that was uh, that was a surprise. So yeah, for those of you yeah. that don't follow him on Instagram, check him out. Um, he has a pretty good, pretty good feed of all the stuff that he's been catching and lead up to his videos. And so yeah, he caught like the bluest sling cod I think I've ever seen, which is pretty yeah, neat. super blue. I mean, yeah. I've caught some blue ones, but this one was like 
full on like dark blue. So yeah. it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Me personally, for anyone asking, like if I've been out, um, Honestly, I've been out once since the shelter in place um, directive came through. I take that back. I've been out twice. Uh, you saw the first video, well, if you watch my channel, uh, where I caught um, uh, my PB red tail on a imitation lucky craft called a Kalisa. <gasps> Happen to have one right here, right? And so um, that's when like the ordinance went out. I was still going to work and uh, I was like, you know, I could still go fishing. Like uh, they, you know, they, they haven't um, told us that we can't be outside yet. And then, you know, things started getting a little more strict and I felt like I should go out one more time before they outlawed it. And uh, we're not there yet, like Washington, where legally you can't go recreational fishing. But um, I think a lot of it mostly has to do with just the pressure of being home, home for the family, because we are schooling our kids at home now. And, uh, and yeah, it just, the weather's been kind of crappy. And, and honestly, it's just like, I don't know. I, I feel like by, by going out, I'm, um, I don't, don't want to say I'm not doing the right thing. And the places I do go, honestly, I don't see a soul for miles, which is why I do it. Um, but like, I don't know, fishing should make me happy. Right. I, I don't want to feel like there's a weight on my shoulder if I do go out. Um, and so I've been kind of internally kind of trying to figure out what's, what's, what's best for myself. Right. So for those of you that think that, um, you know, we're setting a good example or a bad example by fishing or not fishing. Um, really just, you know, don't, don't look to us as like the barometer of what you should do or shouldn't do, do what's best for you, do what's, you know, within regulation and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, what's best for your family. So yeah, that, that's just my personal kind of, uh, you know, uh, take on what's happening in, in my actions so far. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say definitely, I mean, if you do go fishing, obviously the, the most important thing is just is do it responsibly, I guess, and do um, keep your distance as much as possible from other people. And I mean, luckily for kayak anglers, like, I mean, like Nish was saying, I'm not saying like everyone should go fishing, but luckily for us in the kayak or, or on the beach, if you're going to certain places, you could go the whole day without seeing a single person. So, so yeah, yeah. I guess just keep that in mind. But um, but on the on the topic of rockfish, um, we we're going to talk about some of the the fishing seasons that are going on right now. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it had anything to do with the shelter in place ordinance or anything that's going on, but um, the salmon season here in California, which is like probably one of the biggest, maybe Dungeness crab is pretty big too, um, but I think salmon might be the biggest fishing season, like most anticipated fishing season, at least in the Bay Area. If you're a kayaker, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. If you don't have a kayak and you're just one of those Googans standing shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, throwing your uh, uh, lucky, what are they called? The spinner seas? Spinner seas, Gosh, yeah. I, spinner seas. I have like flying seas. I don't know. <laughs> flying seas. Yeah. I have like every color, five, eight pound flying seas because I saw like somebody <laughs> do it. I went out once, I bought every color. I was like, what am I doing? I, like, I'm getting, I'm making so many people angry. They're not letting me cast like wherever I want. Like I have to cast in one line, like every day. I'm like, yeah, that, that's the kind of fishing that definitely wouldn't be um, allowed at this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is not social distancing. That is the, if you go in a book of sin or uh, <laughs> not synonyms, um, is it antonyms? Uh, yeah. On yeah. the other, on the other end of uh, <laughs> social distancing is fishing for salmon at Benicia for real. <laughs> but if you have a yeah. kayaker, 100%, I agree with Adam. Um, yeah. Salmon season is, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so like I was saying, the, the salmon season here in California was set to open at, at least, so I think south of um, Pigeon Point, it was set to open on April 4th and north of Pigeon Point, I think to the border, don't quote me on that, but at least in the Bay Area, north of Pigeon Point, um, it was set to open on April 11th, but um, so I'm not sure if this had anything to do with uh, the shelter in place ordinance, but um, apparently this last week they announced that it was delayed at least till um, May 1st for all of the Bay Area, all the way from, you know, south of Pigeon Point, north of Pigeon Point, didn't matter. Um, so that's the latest as of now, it's not open and the next possible date then it would open would be May 1st. And the um, CDFC or whatever the the fishing people that 
create the laws or set the dates they're meeting next week. DFW, man. Okay, DFW. No, I think there's another one. It's like Pacific Fisheries Council or something. Oh, okay. FC okay. something. I don't know. Anyway, they're meeting next week to determine if May 1st is going to be a, a viable date. So we're crossing okay. our fingers, I guess, for May 1st date. Um, but as of now, um, the salmon season is not open, which, I mean, to be honest, for us kayak anglers, like early in the season, typically fish are much farther out deeper water um so we cannot access them for the most part and then like i said earlier boat all the harbors are closed so boat anglers that can't go out anyway so yeah so in my opinion it really doesn't really affect much um as far as salmon fishing goes yeah so. I, I i have to say like for any trepidation i might be feeling by not targeting surf perch right now because of the you know gray areas that we're all kind of trying to navigate once salmon are like in, I am out there <laughs> as much as I can on my kayak, ninja style. I will go out in the middle of the night, slip past the CHP if I have to, and just camp on the water and wait. I think that's the one type of fishing that I will risk a ticket for because actually, you know what? Salmon fishing from a kayak sucks. So don't do it, anyone. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't be out there. Yeah. It just keeps pulling for everyone to get a kayak, but. No, kayaks. Numbers down. Is this my mic? Kayak suck. <laughs> don't get a kayak. I don't want to see you on the water. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let, let's look at the comments. We've been ignoring everyone okay. that's watching. Yeah, yeah. We, we have like 82 people watching. I don't think we've ever broken. Oh, the, wow. Yeah, we've never broken the 100 mark yet. So for you guys that are watching right now, help us get into triple digits for live people watching. Uh, we that got cool. 80 people. Man, we had I think 82. I got my last live stream, I think I got like 90 something. So if we could get to 100, though. Yeah, be, we need to get to 100. Cool. We, we had 82 about five seconds later, and then two people bounced because I think they oh, heard man. me. I think they heard <laughs> me dissing uh, Benicia. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw Shotgun Aaron. What's up, Aaron? Hey, thanks for, for being out there in the front lines. We appreciate it, man. Hey, what's up, Nick? How's it going? I saw June. So for those of you asking why June's not with us tonight, it's because he sucks. Uh, he has work obligations. If, for those of you that don't know, and I don't think it's a secret, he's a Taekwondo instructor. He's actually like triple black level, black belt level Taekwondo master. So if any of you like, you know, are worried about him spot burning, <laughs> which he does, uh, don't don't even think you could take him on because he, he will like all four foot seven of him will roundhouse kick you <laughs> right into like Southern California. So yeah, he's actually. Yeah, teaching. I think he said in his in his last, or I forget if it was the live stream or maybe it was just I was just talking to him. He said he could kick, uh, like a, a the rim of a basketball hoop, so ten feet. No, I don't know if it's true or not. I didn't see it, but that's what he said at least. Yeah, that that's the fisherman in him talking right there. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> no, but so he has uh, he has work commitments. He's he's juggling his business, his um, you know, his real business. So. Oh yeah, he he couldn't make it tonight, but he said he would check in and, and see what's up uh, because honestly, I don't think he can get enough of you guys. He loves you guys. So yeah. <laughs> um, Chu Larry says, I love all you guys. Hey, we love you too. Um, Slee Lee wants to know, Adam, did you eat that ling yet? So Slee Lee, I didn't eat it yet, but I cleaned it, I filleted it. I vacuum sealed it and it's in my freezer and I will be eating it eventually. I don't know when yet. I did eat, however, if you saw the video, I caught a few rockfish. I ate those tonight and it was, it hit the spot for sure. Some so, fish and chips. Anyways, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I've been trying it in the past for not eating ling and rockfish like straight away. Like people are like, oh, your fish is making it into the freezer. If you can't eat it, don't catch it. <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, but Okay, number one, when I'm out there, it's like, you know, a few times a month I get to go fishing. So when I do go, I'm looking to, you know, fill my bag up and fill my freezer up so I can eat it later. But then two, um, compared to most fish, if there was ever a fish to freeze for a while, it would be rockfish and lingcod, right? Yeah, I mean, I have no, no problems eating it. Like, obviously, it's always better as when you first catch it, if you eat it fresh, it's better. But I mean... If you're buying fish in the store or you're getting it in a restaurant or whatever, it's like it's like 99 percent sure it's, it's been frozen at least once already. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've I ever gone. I don't think I don't think I've ever gone through a batch of rockfish that I'm filleting myself and not run into some kind of parasite. So I mean, that's true. 
Yeah. So for those of you that have never caught a rockfish um, or never filleted a live one yourself or one that was fresh caught, you might be freaked out to see like, like, like sand flea looking things falling out of its like <laughs> gills and like all these little worms crawling under its skin. The reality is these fish like don't move too much, especially in blink cod. So if you're a parasite floating around the ocean, you're gonna totally attach yourself to these ground fish, right? And so they burrow under their skin, they're in their flesh. The first one I ever saw, like totally freaking out, I almost threw it away. But as you get used to them and you start filleting and cleaning them out, you just take the tip of your knife and flick them into the garbage disposal. It's all good, you know? It, I think you definitely become disconnected from what really happens to the protein you consume. Uh, if you're not fishing, but if you're fishing regular and eating the stuff you catch, you're going to run into all kinds of stuff. So don't freak out. Agreed. Agreed. Hey, Nick Fish is yeah. here. He says, parasites are nothing. Just chew your food. <laughs> Sounds like someone doesn't fillet his fish well. <laughs> uh, here's one. Um, uh, Fisher Noob. When should you use gulp sandworm versus uh, lures? So I think, I'm not sure, we, I think we talked about this last live stream, but it's a good question. So we'll do it again. So like the lures that Ish is throwing over here, um, there's the Kalisa and the Lucky Craft, both really good um, lures for surf perch. If you're looking for a big surf perch. So um, in my opinion or my experience, if you're looking for quantity, then go with the sandworm. And if you're looking for quality, then go with the Lucky Craft. I mean. The average size like of a Lucky Craft or Kalisa fish um, is a lot bigger than any than the average size of a gulp sandworm. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is there are certain times um, at the beach or in surf when the Lucky Craft or Kalisa won't make it out to the deep, deepest, deeper enough water for fish to be holding in. So like if you're fishing a really flat beach or if the like the waves are really turning things up. Sometimes the Lucky Craft or the Kalisa just aren't viable options. So in that case, I'd probably stick with the Sandworm as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, my take on that is um, it all depends, right? So if you, like like uh, Adam said, uh, a jerkbait, 90% of the time will filter out um the small ones the, the small dink fish like the big two pounder pluses they will hit this and they will hit these like little schooly stripers um so if you want to target the big pork chop um surf perch like i call them and give your shot give yourself a shot um at a striper if they're in season or a halibut definitely stay consistent to these four inch uh jerk baits these lucky craft or like lucky craft-esque uh jerk baits and they will totally Totally, I think, gets you on the fish. So a lot of people call the Lucky Craft um, the uh, lure of a thousand casts. So that's definitely true if you're targeting like uh, big stripers or halibut, especially like Central Coast or down south. But up here, this is like the lure of 200 casts. I feel like you're going to cast is like 200 times every time you, you tag a significant uh, barred surf perch. So if you just want action or if you're fishing um, a lot of water that's really rough and you have a strong headwind. Uh, it takes like some good tailwind or no wind to cast these where you want them. If you're fighting the wind, these are only five eight ounce, right? Um, if you just want action, you're out there on the beach and it's not prime conditions. Typically, in my experience, the fish will kind of hunker in a deep hole um, pretty low, right? So you can tie like a short um, Carolina rig or uh, a, a dropper loop rig and just keep presentations low to the bottom out of like the turmoil of the surf and uh, you'll get hit and you'll get pecked all day by surf perch if they're there and yeah you might catch them you might catch you know like a, a handful of, of small ones so if you want action that's definitely the time to use it but um, me personally like the biggest perch I've ever caught always on lures cast masters these style trick baits crocodile spoons um yeah that that's that's i think that's the difference between wanting to use a sandworm and not and then if those two aren't working just scoop up some soft shell sand crabs and uh you'll get like instant hits like most of the time too uh go ahead no go go ahead go ahead okay uh where is it uh oh so uh, Wanna Blaze 1 
asked, uh, I just got a new Outback. What fish finder do you recommend? So actually the fish finder that I originally had came with the kayak. It was like a Ray Marine um, dragonfly, I think. And it was good, um, but it was a little too complicated, I think, for the kayak. So it required too many moving parts. So recently I picked up a new fish finder and I actually just copied off of Ish's setup. So maybe he should explain more, but um, but yeah, I got a, a Garmin, Garmin Striker 3, I think. And I think Ish, you have the Garmin Striker 4, is that right? Yeah, I have the Garmin Plus Striker 4, uh, 4 CB. Yeah, so one one model up, but but I mean, personally, I've had it since uh, maybe six months now, and I really like it. I mean, the setup that I have is much simpler than the old setup. So, I mean, you know me, I'm always having problems with electronics. So if I could figure it out, anyone could do it. So, so yeah, I've had no problems with that. Yeah, the uh, the Garmin Striker 4 CV. Oh. Oops, hold on. Oh, can you hear me? Sorry, I think I yep. messed that up. Um, so yeah, the I have the Garmin Striker 4 CV. CV stands for Clearview. And basically what that is, is it's Garmin's um, narrow, what, what's it called? Um, narrow band view. Clear so band. narrow yeah. band. So like um, basic like fish finder talk, like there's different types of uh, bands that shoot out from your fish finder. You have your wide band, which gives you a wide spread with limited detail. And then you have your narrow band, which shoots like right under your vessel, but gives you super clear, like high density um, detail. So it's almost like 3G, you know, like wide cellular coverage versus 5G, which is like very dense, but like super fast, high uh, bit rate um, uh, uh, band and information that's coming to your receiving unit. So um, I love the dual screen on my uh, Garmin Striker 4 CV because I can see bait balls like all around me on the wideband. But then I look at the clear view or Garmin's narrow uh, band right under my boat. And you can see like incredible detail and in reef structure. I can see fish suspended. I can even see um, the salmon video where I caught my first salmon on my kayak. I saw that fish um, come up, chase, go down, come up again, nose it, go down, come up and strike. Like I saw it all happen in my fish finder. I really wish I had a camera on my um, fish finder because like the, the, the story was there. If you watch that video, head over to Ish with Fish. Um, you can see me like looking back and forth at my fish finder in the tip of my rod because I knew the strike was coming. Like I could anticipate it because I could see it happening. I saw this clear um, streak of this orange band like coming up to my um, my my ball, my trolling ball, and then go down, or maybe it was my flasher coming up and then going down, and then boom! Like I could almost like see the strike unfold on my fish finder, which was like incredible. So that that fish was like in sixty feet of water. He came out to like twelve or thirteen pounds, and so on the fish finder, a fish that big, like it totally comes up as like this huge mark. And um, he was sitting on the bottom because he streaked up. So when I caught it, I think I said it in the video, I thought it was initially a halibut because it came like that fish was like resting on the bottom, which is like so crazy to me because salmon like are normally pelagic and suspend in the middle looking for bait balls like they're constantly moving. But this fish was like either sitting or cruising on the bottom really slowly. And then my flasher 30 feet above him caught his attention and uh, caused that strike. So. So yeah, so th that clear view for me was a difference, I think, between um, not seeing a catch unfold and and uh, and seeing a catch unfold. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Okay, let's go back to the next topic, I guess. Sure. We'll just keep moving along here. So I'll start with you, Ish. So the first, the next thing that we wanted to talk about, I guess, is um, what is it like to do YouTube? So. Um, like, how did we start? What are some tips or, or uh, tricks for some other people who might want to create their own videos and, and maybe what you're thinking for the future? So take it away. Oh, man, I could talk about this like forever. <laughs> I have so many thoughts on this, but we only have like an hour. We're trying to actually keep the show to like a real hour this yeah. time. So I think I think we have a hard stop in about like 25 minutes. So so really quickly, if you want to be a YouTuber, don't do it. It's like, <laughs> it, it is so incredibly time consuming. Like people don't understand unless you do it and unless you can get your channel to um, 
I, I'd say if you, okay, if you want to do it, do it, go for it. People will subscribe to you. Like you can post really anything. You'll get a few subscribers. The more time you put into the quality, the more time you put into learning your craft, right? We, we, we're watching a fishing channel. We're all here because of fishing. Um, it, there is this like, there is this like definite wall that you have to cross where you have to get your fishing game on and you have to be able to tell a story like, like well enough to convince people to watch you catch a fish. And so I never thought I'd be doing this. Like I, this is all a fluke for me. Right. So one of the things I have going for myself is that I started early and um, I saw the return, not only from the community, but eventually, you know, the, the hobby started um, paying for itself. So um, that was my, that was my goal. Right. So I, I never wanted to become a YouTuber. I don't even consider myself one. I post videos on the internet for people to watch ultimately because at the time I wanted to have a hobby that could like sustain itself. And it does thanks to you guys watching. Like I don't ask for subscribers. I don't sell merch. Like I don't want to position myself as, as, as someone trying to make a living maybe, maybe one day, I don't know, but uh, I, I'm, I, you know, I have no interest right now of, of merchandising myself um, uh, in, in leveraging the audience that way. I just want to post videos, learn more about fishing, meet the community. That's always been the, the reason why I continue to do it. And thanks to you guys, you guys like to watch and it's, it's gotten to the point where, um, yeah, people ask me for advice. Um, and again, you know, the, the small, the small like pennies that come in do sustain the cost of going out there. So the kayak, the gas, the bait, the gear, um, you know, the, the time spent away from the family, all, all that has value and that adds up. And so that's why I can continue to do it because I was fortunate to start early, like four years ago, um, coming on maybe five years now, um, that the, I was maybe one of the first Bay Area guys to do it consistently enough to build an audience, right? So to do it now, um, if you want to become a quote unquote fishing YouTuber, you, you totally can. Everyone has the tools, the templates there. Matt's is the local guy that can show you that somebody from um, the Bay Area can make it and make it big. Taku is a huge you know, example of how someone can just like like that turn, you know, change, you know, um, turn their completely change their lives basically um, overnight with this with this platform. Um, but yeah, if you want to do it go for it. Just understand that it's a lot of work. Some of it is luck, um, especially when you're fishing. Um, and, uh, you know, you just don't see, you don't 99.9% .9 of you guys that start today won't see, um, the return that you're expecting, I think, because even today I still joke, like I can make way more money working at in and out I think the starting base pay is like <laughs> 17 or 18 dollars an hour and i would be making like so much more money if i just work nights at in and out <laughs> than i do from from youtube but that means i would be working at in and out not fishing and doing what i really like which is probably fishing double then... doubles you get <laughs> oh i could be like so much fatter than i am now <laughs> my like cholesterol be like going through the roof but um but yeah so you know like the, the thing about youtube like when the guys first started coming up right they were um they were the anomalies in the YouTube world because there really wasn't like a Bay Area fishing scene. So when I saw Matt, I was like, oh, wow. Like I, when I subscribed to Matt, he had like maybe, I remember he had like 1,200 subscribers. Like June had like 400 or something like that. Everyone was in the same like kind of starting point, but they were also like that much higher than everyone because no one was doing it at the time. So I started making videos and I started generating a little following. And then today, you know, the platform is so big and inundated with all these fishing channels, it would be very difficult to start a channel and achieve the kind of success that Taku has, that Matt's has. So, you know, do it for fun. Don't go into it thinking it's going to be a career right away, I would say. Um, yeah, do it with realistic expectations. Um, but, you know, if you're good enough to tell a story and produce content that people have never seen before in a style that people like, and uh, you come across as um, somebody that people want to consume on a regular basis, then the world's your oyster. That's that's the thing. That's the cool thing about YouTube. There is no there is no ceiling. Like there's no reason why Taku can't have 10 million subscribers. There's no reason why Matt's can't have 20, right? So there is no barrier to entry. Too you could do all of this with your cell phone. So um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting time that we live in. So I know. Yeah. I guess luckily, in a sense, I started out. Um, long enough ago where I 
got onto that initial wave. Because if I was as good as I think I was, I would have way more subscribers than I do. So, <laughs> so that, that, that's the other thing about YouTube, right? If you do start and you aren't like skyrocketing like some of the popular guys, ultimately it's on you. Like YouTube is a very democratic process. It's the people, your peers are consuming you. And uh, it's the user base that will tell you if you suck or not. And so if you aren't, you know, on this crazy trajectory like you thought you were, then, you know, that's, that's, that's the there's audience base. Yeah, not, there's, a, yeah, the audience base is telling you that you suck. So, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but have fun with it if you are starting out. And, uh, and uh, that's, that's, that's my opinion on that. So what about you? What would you say? What, yeah. what's, what's it like having a, a, an audience base like you do now? Uh, you know, people watching you fish, which is like insane. To yeah, say. I mean, it's like it, when I, well, I, I'll start at the beginning. So when I first started, or when I first, before I started, so I was, uh, I would watch like Ish and June and, and Matt's. I think um, when I first created the channel, the Hard Fishing, um, I think Matt's was just had started going full time. Like, so I think he was probably around 50,000 or something. I probably started watching him when he was around 20,000. So I don't know. I came in later than, than these guys. But um, okay, so when I first started, it's kind of funny. So when I first started, I my thought was, oh, like, look at these guys, you know, Ish and June, they're all catching these fish. I can do that. That's no problem. Like, I'll go out and make my own videos and it'll it'll go like, like just like theirs was, I guess. So, so like Ish was saying, I, I went out and I did it, or I thought I was doing it. And uh, obviously I couldn't do it. I mean, it's one thing to go see the video and it's one thing to go out and catch your own fish, but catching your fish and putting it into a video is like, I, I personally, I underestimated that part. So, I mean, hopefully now I'm, I'm a little better at it. I can, I can create a, a watchable video, but if you go back and look at my like, you know, OG videos way back, uh, it's pretty, pretty cringy. A little rough, but, um, a little rough. So anyway. <laughs> But, I mean, it, it's gotten a little bit better. I wouldn't say that I'm a pro like these guys with the editing and the filming, but um, it's gotten a little bit better. It's it's at least viewable now. But um, but yeah, where was I going with this? Oh, so uh, when I finally started the channel, my my goal was okay. When I when I was a kid, I always wanted to get like a boat to fish off because my you know, I've been fishing my dad and he he took me all over the place to the beach and everything, but we never had a boat. And so that was my goal as a kid. And it, it kind of still is. I, I still don't have one. But my goal is if I create videos, hopefully at one day, it'll it'll tally up enough money to buy me a boat. That was like my <laughs> my final. Uh, like Or goal. just fish, just fish long enough where you get hit by a boat. And you make a video <laughs> where you get 1.2 million views and then you'll have enough money to well, buy a boat. Yeah, see, now, now, now looking back, that should be my goal. But yeah, at the time, I, I had no idea what that would happen but anyways so that was my my reason for starting the channel i found out that it was way harder than it looks to do the filming aspect it's one thing to catch fish but to put it on film and make it you know edit to where it's viewable is like a whole nother like catching the fish is level one making it to a youtube video is like level 10 so so yeah it's harder than it looks but i mean i definitely recommend it to anyone who who wants to try it like just buy the a cheap don't you don't have to get like a gopro 8 or whatever that's 400 dollars. buy like a cheap gopro go out there and like just try to film a, a fishing video and see see what it comes out like i mean um when i first started i think i had a gopro well i still have it actually a gopro i feel there's a three or a four session which is like super simple it's literally you just press record press to stop record that's it um there's no like settings or anything like that so yeah, anyway. now it's at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> no, no. I oh, still no, that have one? the original oh. one. I got oh, a new you lost one, the new one. one yeah. the, yeah, the, the new one's at the bottom of the ocean. That's funny. But um <laughs> but yeah, I still have the OG GoPro, which I'll, I'll find it one of these days. In, in the yeah, I, I still shoot I still shoot with three GoPro Hero 4s. And the reason why I do that is because they have um the auxiliary port for um auxiliary mics, because the onboard mics are historically poor the new ones are actually pretty nice but the four to like six they're pretty terrible and the nice thing about the fours is parts replacement parts and batteries are so like dirt cheap and they can sync to um the remote i have so like if you see my kayak videos sometimes i have like three if not four cameras because I, I like angles and being able to 
um, use those angles to craft a narrative that is like um, that's clean and, and has a lot of cool like views of the action. Because you know when you're out there fishing, um, 99% of the time it's just dead time and downtime. You're trying to capture that one moment that everyone is watching for, um, especially like on my channel because I'm not a cook, right? And I'm not going to be sitting on like some kelp out there like boiling crabs and butter you know that's not my thing it's the catch that i want to capture and hopefully um, produce in a way that people watch vicariously um so that's that's like i understand that's like you know the the narrative i try to bring um yeah let me shoot over to the comments i know fishing man risa what's up dude um he says yeah just have fun be yourself that's that's totally true that's totally true yeah. however if you want to um like take off faster than most or or artificially like create um a spike in your audience base you definitely have to be mindful of who you are and the type of fun you're projecting some people have it naturally um some people don't um so you definitely if you want to turn it into something big and like uh you know turn it into something more than it maybe it is for you then you definitely have to be uh, aware of those things like there, there's definitely um, some respect has to be paid to the YouTube algorithms, right? So your watch time has to be huge. If you produce a 10 minute video, people have to watch for 10 minutes. They have to come back and watch that video over again. They have to share that video. All of those actions produce recommendations and those recommendations are what spreads you out. So like Matt's does a great job of that. Taku does a great job of that. Uh, one Rod, One Reel, in my opinion, does a great job of that. And those guys are the guys that are destined for, for big things on this platform. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I mean, to everyone that says like, be real, be, be you, that's why I like you, thank you so much. But that kind of commitment in four years hasn't gotten me to millions of dollars. So I can't just be <laughs> myself. I'm gonna have to change something at some point. I'm gonna have to become a, a sushi chef or just be like, you know, F my heart and just start eating everything in butter because that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah uh, yeah it's, it's definitely it, it definitely pays uh like be like interesting kind of at the beginning like when you when fishing first started on youtube like if you were just a fisherman you went out and caught fish like you'll get views because there's not much other content out there but it definitely pays yeah. nowadays to have like that little something extra like different than than everyone else which is like case in point is taku outdoor chef life i mean he's catching the fish but then he's also you know making a five-star meal to go with it so yeah see that guy sorry talk you but like you're you're a great forager you're you're still a noob at fishing but what you are <laughs> is a culinary artist and i think that yeah. is that is an element that nobody has right he has that eye and then plus his his um girlfriend jocelyn she's a, she's a great like cinematographer like the the camera that she uses is like amazing the angles they get they've gotten really good at editing i remember taku's uh, original videos um they uh are so far like like behind what they are able to produce as a team and so um yeah they they definitely have like a, a good chemistry and something something pretty special going on over there so i use that as an example of how like great content unique content can turn like literally like turn your life around overnight um because as far as i know and taku has talked about it i remember the moment they said and i remember they told us i think privately that I think we're going to pursue this full time. I think we can do this. And it uh, takes a lot of courage to be able to do that. And you got to be, and, and frankly, too, all these other elements have to work out for you, too, if you are going to pursue this full time. I think you got to get to a point where you have tens of thousands of followers, if not, you know, a uh, hundred thousand, because in the Bay Area to have a, um, you know, a, a livable income, there's certain like benchmarks you have to hit, right? You, if you have kids, like it's over for you. <laughs> if you have a career that's like well paying, it's hard to walk away from Definitely that, right? That. Yeah, because because not only do you have to, um, you know, be wary of uh, the responsibilities you have in your life to walk away from and pursue this thing full time, but um, you got to be able to 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 bring it and and bring it in such a way that if it fails, you have a backup plan, or if you, if it <laughs> if it works out great, um, yeah. You, and then too, like, because it's fishing, there's this huge time commitment. Like, you know, like I think when Matts and Taku are consistently uh, uh, producing content, they're out there like a full-time job, you know, minimum 40 hours, maybe, maybe 60 oh, hours. You I know? would, I would guess closer to 60. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, outdoor chef life, that's a two person job. That's Jocelyn and Taku. So as, as far as I can tell, um, 
that is that channel is supported by two talented people putting in 80 hours a week minimum yeah. into into producing one if not maybe two videos once in a while a week and so yeah like you know, I could never compare myself to them. That that's a full time operation. Matt's too. I mean, Matt's is out there. Um, you doing it because I, I perceive it as the love of it because he was the, one of the first to do it yeah. and do it really well. Um, but you know, for for every well crafted um, story that you see that's posted as a, a YouTube video, there I know from experience, there's you know five six others that it feel like a waste of time almost because like you go out there, you're filming, filming, you just don't get what you need to produce something. So um, just, just be aware. Yeah. If you're going to pursue this uh, it's, it's difficult. It's very difficult, but like, it's like this, like it's so hard to get any traction, but just like the coronavirus virus at any time <laughs> that bitch can spike and boom, you know, you can quit your job and pursue like the world. So that's, I, I think that's the, I think that's the, um, that's what makes it so juicy to everyone, right? That's what makes it so yeah. captivating that opportunity because it's there for anyone. Like anyone in the comments right now, I'm, I'm looking at you, Nick. I'm looking at you, Chris Fish Dish. Like you guys have started this journey, right? So that is that pursuit that is always like hanging over your head. Like it, it could happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at me. I went out salmon fishing, didn't catch any salmon. I, I did catch a link cod, but I just happened to get hit by a bow and boom. A million views just like that so yeah. you never know when when something like that could come up <laughs> but um, yeah i think i forgot who it was but someone was asking um how long does it take to edit a video so i mean uh for for me personally i spent like the minimum uh as opposed to the some of the other guys so i think it so for a standard like 10 to 15 minute video i probably spend I want to say like two hours, maybe on average, editing it. But I mean, you can see, you've seen my videos like that. I have minimal editing compared to like Ish and some of the, you know Taku and and um, uh, more than fishing. All those, or sorry, yeah, more than fishing and uh, Fisherman's Life. I'm sure they spend a lot lot more time. I don't know. How about you, Ish? Oh man, uh, honestly, for every minute of video you see, I spend an hour editing. A ten minute video will take yeah. ten hours to edit, and that I. I yeah, I, I, I count the time it takes to download footage, surf through the many, 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 many clips, and then craft like the three or four, you know, video tracks to put it into something that looks good and fun um, because it just, it, it's a time suck. And so like for me, you know, full-time dad, um, I have a full-time job. The, the only hours I have to work are after the kids go to bed. And so, um, you know, I fish on the weekends when I can, and then I edit after hours so i'll be at my computer for like you know three or four nights straight um two three hours at a time here and there and so yeah. if there's ever you know if there's ever um something i could say about how much i love doing it it's that fact the fact that i could just like drive for uber or go work at in and out and make way more money like so much more money but i'd rather be at the desk like crafting a story posting it um seeing the feedback and making those connections with not only the fishing community, but, you know, like reaching out and touching people that are more experienced than me. And then I do get that like, hey, if you ever, you know, want to do this, come out with me, or I get tips in the comments that make me a better fisherman. So like, man, I can't even watch my old, like my old stuff. So as an editor and a fisherman, I was like, so bad. I'm like, I, I'm still pretty bad. But um, yeah, that's <laughs> if there's anything to say, like, why I do it. Um, and if it's still worth it. Yeah, it's still worth it to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm looking over at the comments here. Um, out of curiosity, how long until you guys hit your first thousand? It took a, it took a while for me. Like it, I think because fishing was still yeah. like relatively like a new trend on on uh, YouTube. It took me, you know, less than about a year oh, maybe. Yeah, like a consistent I want to say. Posting. Yeah, like nine months, something like that. I don't know exactly. It'd be interesting to look back. But I remember. Okay. I remember when I first started, it was like, you know, 10, 15 was like a big number. Um, and then I went, actually, I went fishing. Ish was actually the first, uh, like, YouTuber that, you know, I kind of fished with or got a shout out from whatever. I remember it, we were just talking about the other day. It spiked 18 or 19, 19. 19, 19 subscribers. And that was like a big deal. Overnight. Uh, well, I think you had like 50 something and you <laughs> went from 50 to 19. So, okay. So yeah. I'll tell, I'll tell you this, guys, like, 
that jump seems small, but and this is my this is this is my opinion. It's all relative. Like if the yeah. algorithm sees that you've gotten the spike in content and spike in subscribers and watch time, it tells YouTube like, hey, there's something going on with this this channel. Start recommending his mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So then, I mean, I, I did that happened, and you know, so that probably boosted me to like sixty nine or whatever. But uh, and uh, then I think yeah, later I think it was like maybe ten or 11 months, like almost a year after I started the channel, I, I fished with um, uh, Fisherman's Life with Matt. And uh, at the time I had, I think 2000 subscribers, something like that. And and then I fished with him and boom, another like big jump. I think I went from two to 6,000 or 7,000, like in a couple of days, it was insane. But um, yeah, so yeah, it, it takes a long time to like get that first, you know, a oh, hundred it takes a long time getting to a thousand takes a long time you know but it's all exponential so uh, wait hold on i gotta <laughs> answer this I, I sounds got... like you got something good uh, i'm just reading the comments here somebody asked hey nick how hard does it hurt when you lose audio or video or both on a gopro has that happened yet <laughs> and then there's this savage dude named dw says nick doesn't lose audio or video he loses the whole camera <laughs> 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 oh my god, that's fucking that's savage, man. That's so Watch. funny. But that's true though, Nick. That 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 rusty duck catch, you still owe me that. I'm just playing. Sorry, Nick. We love you. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, it looks that's like funny. we also got a donation here. Thank you, addicted oh, fishing. Oh, nice. Ish have to, you know, take you out to a donut for a donut once this coronavirus <laughs> is over. Hey, I got I got nine ninety nine donated from one guy when I stream this on my channel. So um, I'm setting the uh, bar here. See, <laughs> that is half what I would be making at In and Out because they, they they give you eighteen bucks an hour. We've been online streaming That's for right. for fifty seven minutes. An hour. Adam just made five dollars. <laughs> five dollars an hour, big time. <laughs> uh, Plus, I have to split it with H, so it's actually only like two fifty an hour. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Um yeah, so yeah, you know, earlier in the comments I did see people talk about the first YouTubers that they were aware of or fishing YouTubers. So I have to say the first fish like the very first fishing tuber overall. Uh, I I it's so weird. I remember it. I remember going on YouTube because I didn't watch YouTube regularly like a, like TV like like everyone does now. I went to YouTube for instructions on how to do stuff, right? I think that's what a lot of people were doing at the time. And so um, I remember I was like trying to figure out how to tie like, like rigs for surf perch. And I remember seeing a video of this kid fishing like a small local bass tournament. And this kid had like 50,000 subscribers. And I'm like, what, what, what? And then I saw the name of the channel, One Rod, One Reel Fishing. I was like, well, he can do everything with one rod, one reel. Cause I had like, by that time, like five rods and five reels. So I started watching this guy. I was like, damn, dude, this, I don't know what it is. This guy fishes like in Maryland. He lives in Maryland. So he fishes like all kinds of species, inland species that I don't really care about. But I really liked him, right? And then I saw his channel. I was like, wow, this guy has like 50,000 subscribers. I think I was like in the 50,000s for, for uh, one, one, one rod, one reel fishing, right? So I subscribed to him. And then I was like, wow, if this guy can um, have a sustained audience like that i wonder who's doing it in the bay area and like coincidentally like it was either like that week i found matt's because i wanted to know how to make crab snares that's when he was like the low thousands and subscribers and then because of youtube like i got recommended june stuff and i saw this little filipino guy like with waders like way too big for him catching like like 20 pound surf stripers like every day like if you watch june's first fishing videos he's catching like buckets of of 20 pound stripers and bringing them home. And he's like on this consistent run where he's just like catching big striper after big striper. And so, um, oh, $5, five, five dollar donation. We're getting up there. $10 an hour. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> Man, we're only we're only $8 shy of the in and out rate. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so yeah, so I remember those were the three I was aware of. Uh, Rudy, I forget the full name of the channel, but like Rudy something um, was, was one of the originals I saw. Uh, Stello 415, um, Steve Gutierrez, I think his last name is. He's like one of the OGs like around here. So like those those four names were the guys that I remember watching when I first started. So yeah, I go back as far as 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 a lot of you guys. I think that's like four or five years ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think the same for me. I mean, I watched, I, I came in later, so like there was a few more fishing channels, but I, I was mainly fit watching the, the local guys. So like Fish with Fish, more than fishing. Um, I, I think I probably was watching uh, Philosophy D at the time. Yeah. Uh, definitely uh, Fisherman's Life, obviously. Um, yeah. Or Orville says one rod sister though. Yeah, dude. <laughs> she's she's something, man. She, and she like doesn't look like Mike, so like it's just <laughs> enough where I'm like, am I attracted to Mike too? Because his sister, damn. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, hey, let me show you really quick the, some free stuff I got in the mail um, the other day. Um, so company. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so again, uh, one of the fun things about having a YouTube channel, when you hit like these 10, 20,000 subscriber benchmarks, like companies will hit you up left and right to, to you know, so show you their stuff so that you can show it to other people. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'd say though, I'd say though, uh, for every five offers I get, I accept one because like, I just have no room for all this Chinese garbage, man. But, <laughs> but in, in the pile of garbage, there are those few gems, right? So line came in from this company called Reaction Tackle. I had never heard of them. But the reason why I said yes is because it's because they make an orange braid, right? I'm a Giants fan. I have a lot of like blacked out reels and rods and stuff. And so I could never find an orange braid that doesn't like instantly fade. And so um, they said, this stuff won't fade. We'll send you this orange stuff. Um, and so I'm excited to use it and just like running my fingers through it, it actually like does not come off, um, on my fingers very easily. So we'll see if it catches any fish. This is a 40 pound. I'm going to be using it, uh, for rockfish and lings this season. So reaction tackle. Thanks for the orange braid. Again, I'm not being paid to say this. They just sent me this to use in a video. That's how that works. Uh, but finally found myself some giants braid right on. Awesome. I'm sure if you use it in the bay, you're bound to find something in there. Yeah. All those Giants fans out there. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about using it for salmon because they, they can be a little line shy. So I don't know about this bright orange lion like dragging through the water might spook them. But uh, hey, yeah. fishing with Manresa, I know you represent Dallas and, <laughs> and, and the Dodgers. Sorry. This, this guy right here, but I, I understand, hey, as, as long as you're a, a fan and uh, as long as you stick with one team, you don't bounce around, then, you know, you're a truer fan than the guys that show up to, like, the you know, World Series with, like, tags still on their jersey. But uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of, 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 of blue and, uh, yeah, uh, I just picked up a uh, real Lucky Craft right here, and this is the Kalisa. So speaking of fishing with Man Racer, Cook to Cook, you guys are the ones that put this on the map. I was like, I want to see for myself because I have a metallic sardine Lucky Craft, but not a glow sardine. And so out of the box, man, these things are super similar. I have to say, though, the Kalisa is a little fatter. And just objectively, I can cast it a little more predictably. It doesn't tumble as much. Um, that's just been my experience. So I know the weight system is a little different. I think Edward did a, 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 he cut them open just to see what they look like inside. And so this does have a little more predictable cast. It, it does bite this lower, like 99%, but it works. Um, and I want to use this as a segue. Change your hooks out. The hooks and terminal tackle in both of these, that's Agreed. where they um, that's where they totally skimp on um, their, uh, their money. They, they make their profit on, um, one, the name, and then two, um, they save money on the terminal tackle. So with you guys that are in areas where you can catch stripers, you will totally regret it if you hook into something giant unless your name is adam and with stock hooks you can you can haul in a 20 pound striper if you guys didn't see episode two go to episode two because we recap that video it's pretty dope yeah I, I definitely would not recommend it but for some reason just the the fishing gods were shining on me that day or something <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we were able to get it in <laughs> hey uh slee lee says ish i want to see you catch more halibut Slee, I want to see Ish catch more halibut too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So targeting halibut from the shore is like really fun. I've never done it from the surf because I think in NorCal, it really just isn't as accessible as it is in Southern California. But but I do have a 
a goal this year, one of my fishing goals, if we're allowed to fish, you know, like on a normal basis in the future, is to limit out on um, halibut. In California, it's a three fish limit. I think at the minimum size is 22 inches uh, per fish, yep. right? So, so I think I could do it. I've caught a keeper. Um, I've caught multiples before, but never three keepers. And I, I, I think I can do it. I want to do it. Hey, by the way, speaking of limits, let me ask you, Adam, this is a question I have. You said sure. in your Instagram post that um, you caught your limit of lingcod, which is only one. I thought it was two. Well, what's the deal? Yeah, so actually, and I had to look this up to clarify also, um, but the limit for lingcod currently in the Bay Area, um, I think it's south of Mendocino. Uh, but double check that. Don't, don't take my word for it. But I'm pretty sure south of Mendocino, the limit is one lingcod per person. And um, they actually just put out, along with the, the, the salmon season delay, they put out that the link cod limit is going to be bumped back up to two for all of California starting June 1st. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so the first so, two months, only one. Oh, wow. See, thanks to this guy, I'd be out there with like double fisting two <laughs> wings, like showing Instagram. And meanwhile, I'd be like, ah. So I'm back, bro. Nice. It's not June 1st yet. <laughs> yeah. Hey, fishing yeah, with so... Sarah. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's not Manresa. Manresa is a beach, right? Man, Sarah. Sorry about it. <laughs> Santa Cruz Surfcaster says uh, the halibuts are in Santa Cruz. That's true. Yeah, he's he's caught some nice ones from the surf. Go ahead and check out uh, Everett Channel, Santa Cruz Surfcaster. He's another one of those guys where just want to throw love to because... He has he has a pretty fun little channel. It's it's pretty simple, straight to the point. Catches the fish. He show you it can be done. Um, pretty good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Vinny Fish says Dodgers are no no. The Dodgers hate on themselves more than ever. I could ever hate on them. So I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them just crash and burn on their own. I don't need to do anything for them. <laughs> uh, this guy. Oh my gosh, I can't even pronounce your name, bro. But he says I'm gonna try. Bat Jargal, Dugajarga. Dugarja, oh my god, I'm sorry, bro. Bat a plus on the effort. I don't know about the execution, but a plus on the effort. Pay for effort. He says, Hi, Ish. I just bought three Kalisa Glow Minnows. Use your name, have the 10% off now. Now I want to buy a fishing rod. Can you recommend me the best casting rod for these Kalisa Lords? Okay, so I'm glad you asked that. Barjagal, Jagrakamov. So go light. It, it's it's like I can't stress enough how light you have to go like it, it doesn't make sense if you're not into fishing like you would think oh the heavier and and like uh, firmer the rod is the farther I could fling a small um, five eighths out jerk bait like this it's the opposite you okay respect the rods ratings and you're gonna want at least I think like an eight and a half foot rod like nine is the sweet spot Damn, dude! Addictive fishing just dropped another ten bucks. That's oh, twenty. Oh man! Whoa! We're getting oh. close to <laughs> an out rates. <laughs> oh my god, dude! It's like Thank the managers. Fishing. The managers just tapped us on the shoulder and just said, <laughs> "You are ready for fries, my guy. Head over to the fries. We're gonna bump you up to twenty bucks an hour." Yeah. Uh, Thank but... you. And I, I didn't know you're in Washington, so apparently it's it's illegal to fish there right now. So. Sorry. Yeah, can you let us know addicted fishing? Yeah, we're on an assumption that you can't fish in Washington and California is uh, totally going to follow your steps, I think, I think. But going back to the answer, oh, the, the question, it. hey, this is our first guest. Awesome. Yeah, people have been asking us when we're going to have guests, so I'm happy we're here now. Uh, but yeah, so just really quick, I wanted to answer this for uh, this dude. Go light. So I would say minimum eight and a half foot rod. Um this is a again a five eighths ounce uh, uh, lure. So look at the lure rating. A rod that is rated for like five eighths ounce to maybe one and a quarter, one and a half ounce, but has like moderate action, will cast this the best. I know that because from experience, my go-to surf rod is a um, Phoenix Trifecta 907, and that is rated one to six ounces, and so it's got this like massive range. So it's great because it's got like a firm back so I can cast like, I really got it for like throwing metals because I'll throw like a two ounce Mickey jig or cast master when the, the um, uh, stripers are in. But it also has a soft like kind of tip that can like just just enough to fling something like this out. And I caught my PB red tail on that rod. 
but but my Lama Gloss X11, which is rated for like uh, five eighths to uh, one and a half, it flings it much more consistently with more control. And my Akuma SST Medium, which has the same rating, but like even more moderate action um, than the Lamy, uh, casts it even better. So if you're going with a spinning rod or casting rod, look for those ratings in my opinion. Uh, addicted fishing says, yeah, yeah. Addicted fishing said, yeah, it's terrible. No fishing right now. Our state just extended an another ten dollars. Oh man, <laughs> dude, Adam, 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 what? Adam, I think you're at thirty bucks right now. Twenty five bucks. We're we're like getting to manager level at it now, pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, they they just took you from the fries. They said, Adam, <laughs> Adam, come to the burgers right here. This is where the magic happens, right here. <laughs> Oh man! And thank you. Uh, what is it? Mad Mad Jack eight one five. Thank you. Yeah, you didn't have to. Um, yeah. So addictive fishing just says, uh, yeah, our state just extended the stay at home, stay uh, stay healthy order through May fourth. Um, it, same thing happened in California. Got extended to May third. I think that we're realistically looking looking at extensions through middle of June, um, and uh, maybe beyond. I'm not sure. So you know not to take a sour note on things, but for anyone out of work and hurting right now, um, you know, it's been hard to produce content. Like part, part of my YouTube, like YouTube is always in the back of my mind, like that content kind of hustle, like what can I produce next? Part of me wants to take advantage of the fact that we have like this global captive audience, right? Um, people are sitting at home uh, doing nothing except for watching TV and maybe YouTube. The reality is um, I'm stuck at home too and I can't go fishing as much. And so, um, Hopefully, 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 just know we're all in this uh, together. Yeah, it, it sucks. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, soon you'll be on the lettuce. That's where the magic happens. That's a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's an old school, uh, what's that dude's face? Uh, <laughs> that, what's that guy's name? Uh, parrot? Shoot. Maybe parrot, yeah. Yeah. That's a parrot rush. That's a parrot uh, reference for sure. Um, I wonder if you think you can catch anything on lettuce around here? Like you think you can catch a rockfish on lettuce? I think so. oh 100%. I've caught yeah, I think so. smelt on french fries, so why not let <laughs> I mean, I caught smelt with a cheeseburger once, but I wasn't recording it. It was like on um it was just like on one the, of those days where I went the patty or on the bun. On the patty. Like I got like a chunk oh. of fat and <laughs> dude, smelt hit it like in 2 seconds. They eat anything. But heck yeah. Um <laughs> let's see. Llama gloss is the juice. I love llama gloss. I have this rod that I've never used and I, I, it was like a total impulse buy. It's a Lama Gloss Infinity uh, back bouncer rod. And somebody told me it is the SHIT when it comes to throwing some big swim baits. And so, you know, as soon as I hear something about gear that somebody else likes, of course, I run to eBay, run to Amazon. <laughs> I'm like, what's this guy talking about? I saw this rod. It's a like a $300, $350 rod marked down to like 99 bucks. And I was like, what in the heck? So I bought it. I just bought it. I was just like, this is stupid. I shouldn't be wasting my money, but thank you guys for watching my channel. It allows me to do these stupid things. I just bought it. <laughs> and when it came, I know why it was marked down to hundred bucks is because the boat was smashed, right? It was like mm. destroyed. Like the bottom four inches was gone. Like the UPS truck driver like ran it over. The guy sent it back and then they marked it down without saying that it was smashed. So I was like, what am I going to do? So I actually uh, wrote Lama Gloss an email and said, this is what happened. I accidentally backed up over my own rod. I kind of lied. And they actually like hit me back like same day. And they said, these are the parts that you want to replace it. Here's a, here's a rod building like tip. Like this is how you do it. Um, and we'll sell you all the like replacement parts for $5. I was like $5. So it was like the wrap, like a little like insert and like a rubber cap. And so they sent it to me. And so I just still have, I just have to put it together. And I'll have this like awesome um, swim bait rod hopefully in the future. <laughs> That's um, awesome. <laughs> uh, man, okay, so we're here. See, time, time flies by. We're already at 74 minutes in the stream. I, we promised ourselves we'd only go an hour, so <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Adam? Are, are, are we going to cut it, or are you good to go? Right, let's let's do one more question. One more, let's find a good one. Okay. Uh, let's see. So shoot, shoot your questions now. We'll get one more, and then we'll call, call it a night. Okay, how about you pick one and I'll pick one. Okay, okay, sounds good. 
And uh, I don't know about you, but my connection is like looking pretty shady. So I don't know. It might yeah, be. I think it's just you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm having Sorry to problems. say. <laughs> Uh, let's see here what's up mario ryan says swim bait rod for bass i i don't know i am not a, ba I'm not I'm not a bass a, guy we're not bass guys <laughs> i was speaking for for adam too i don't know <laughs> i think i've got one bass on my channel and it was it took me like three days to catch so don't take my advice at all <laughs> uh, uh, let's see uh, let's see best fight on a fish Ooh, that's a good question I'll, I'll i'll answer that really quick hands down it was that big jack ball i caught in mexico like it was it was an educated it was an educated guess at that that type of fish and where to hit where to where to catch them it was right before my sister's like literally the day of my sister's wedding that i officiated in mexico i had two to three hours to kill like my like all the bridesmaids were doing their thing already. I was like, Joaquin, let's go fishing. Daddy has like an hour. And in that like hour or two window, I hooked up with like a 15 pound Jack Crabal, like steps from my room. And that fish fought so unbelievably hard. Like, I don't know, like I've caught sturgeon that outweighed. I've caught bat rays. Okay, bat rays are just like freaking tanks that just go, but don't really like kick and give you that head shake. That Jack Crabal, how I caught it, in the location I caught it, with the pressure on me to catch something, with my son watching me, man, dude, that is easily the hands down the best catch I've ever had, and it was the hardest fighting uh, fish I've ever fought. It was just insane, and I did it on that ten dollar, you know, telescopic rod. So that fifteen pound fish felt like it was a hundred pounds. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if you guys haven't seen the video, definitely go check it out. I mean, that was, I think, how many? It's only got like what four thousand views. It, it deserves like forty thousand at least. So it deserves like 40 check million. It out <laughs> yeah. Okay. 40 million. There we go. 400,000 <laughs> at least. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It's one of those videos where, yeah, like it, like I, I think about this about all my vids, but truly I think that video is worth a watch <laughs> if you haven't seen it and like worth a watch over and over because I think I should have done a better job of like really painting like a picture of how tight the window I had and how everything just, like it's one of those things where that's why you go fishing. Like the universe just, just, right just ah, right there for me and i <laughs> captured that moment and my gopro was running and i and i got it on film and i was able to share it with everyone it was just like insane how great that was, that was awesome. um yeah rich yeah. fusion 32 says ish for mayor for fishing i i got i got your vote i appreciate it rich <laughs> <laughs> okay i think i got my question here i forgot it was on here somewhere and i've lost it already but um someone asked uh, your like number one bucket list fish. So I don't know. It's, it's a hard, hard one to, to pin down. I don't think there's one fish that I want to catch. I think there's a lot of them, but right now, currently the, the one that's on my mind is a sturgeon. So that's the one that I want to catch. I, uh, I watched this guy catch one and it only fueled the fire. So I, I've gone out a few times now. I went out a couple of times after, even after that one and, and didn't, wasn't able to connect, but that's my goal. And I don't know, Ish, do you know if it's too late now for the season? Do I need to wait till the winter again? I feel uh, like so, it is. Yeah, so, okay, I'm not a surgeon expert, but from what I've read <laughs> and what I've heard, right, um, they are in, shit, man, I'm, I'm totally like misquoting a lot of surgeon guys are like, you're wrong, but it's the rainy season that you have to follow because they yeah. press into these fishable areas when it rains because it's that fresh water coming from the creeks and streams um, flushing into the bay. It's that mixture of fresh and salt water that they are looking for. And uh, in my very limited experience, all sturgeon fishing lines up with, with those um, right. seasons of the year. And so I think it might be a little late to get a, um, you, you miss, I think you missed a window for a consistent bite. So you can still target, you can target them wherever you want, but it's just, are they there? You know, I think I'm forced to wait till, till like November, December time. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, that's my, that's what I'm on my mind right now. Cause I think it's like the only Bay area fish that I haven't caught. Yeah. Really. Um, Ryan Shembury says, to be honest, I know some guys catching sturgeon up by Verona right now. I don't even know where Verona is. 
Is that is that like Delta? I don't know. Yes, I don't know. That must be far up there. Yeah, if, if that's a if that's a um a Delta or a river system, that's out of my league. I don't even know where that. I don't even know where Verona <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. yes, yeah. You know, Sturgeon Sturgeon is like. I, I get it now. I understand why people chase these things. Like I, I mentioned this in episode two, of the shelter show, it is so boring. Like you are just staring at your rod tip, like a jerk off, just like waiting for like that little tap tap. And if you miss that, if you see that pump and you miss the hook set, you you're done. You're like that's it. Gone. And you might get a few more chances, but that's what you're looking for. And I've put in probably 22 hours up into that catch and maybe literally like cycle through a hundred ghost shrimp just to get that one. And I've seen that tap tap almost every time and I missed the hook set. Um, and in the first 10 minutes of that one video, tap tap and I got him. And so thank you to um, Kayak Fishing with Matt because it was his videos that inspired me to reach out. And um, I learned so much from him because that was the second time I actually went out with him. And the first time he taught me how to rig my uh, my anchor pulley system. He taught me um, what to look for, how to play the rod, how to play the fish once I hooked up. And uh, all those lessons, just again, it was just that moment that you are like hunting for. It's that rush that you're, everyone on this channel is like, you know, craving, right? It's that rush that you search for and just everything peaked and it captured it. So, yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. So anyway, I think, I think we should start wrapping it up here. We've been on for almost an hour and a half already even though we're not i don't think we're ever going to make it an hour but we'll keep shooting for it but, hey 20 uh, 25 dollars that's 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 new levels right there for the shelter show we're hitting big time big time hey that, so, that anyway how, how much dog food can you buy for olaf for 25 bucks that's like three I months mean, here we that's go like, yeah we can get oh. at least another one of these oh that looks like some bay area uh like does that come with like avocado toast or something um it's a 98 percent cage-free chicken so uh yeah to be honest i don't i don't buy the dog food that's my wife's <laughs> domain hey, but go ahead. i just want to say um red baron in the comments keeps asking um did you ever get the information on the guy that hit you on the kayak um there is a oh, i'm speaking for adam but there is a follow-up vid to the infamous kayak boat accident vid um go watch it because he answers those questions yeah. So, uh, so anyway, uh, you have anything else? You want uh, to yeah, I just want to close it out. Um, Warrior Fisherman says, um, "When's the next show?" Oh, that's a good. One. Hey, that's a good question. Um, yeah, thanks for actually asking because that tells me that people want to watch this and more of this. So, this is episode three. We're definitely planning episode four. We're trying to do this on a weekly basis. So uh thursdays i think is what we're trying to target right so thursday friday yep. it's gonna be like thursday friday around this time um and so yeah so we'll try to catch us live it's gonna probably be on my channel because i think it's my turn to host and and we're working on a pretty cool guest um i think you guys will, will like uh the guest that we might have it'll be the first official like other human guest guest yeah human guest this time <laughs> And uh, every, I'm pretty sure everyone knows about um, this channel too. So it should be fun. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, thank you guys, everyone for watching. Thank you for tuning in, leave your comments and, and everything. So yeah, uh, like Ish was saying, we're planning to do the next show next week. So if you don't already follow one of us on Instagram and I'm sure you'll, you'll see the official announcement or date drop there. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you for everyone for tuning in and, and you know, putting your input in this, this show is kind of, it's, it's not just Ish and, and myself in June, it's, it's everyone. So, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. So, so wait, D, 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 one more thing. DW okay. does say, <laughs> can you give us more than uh, the same day notice? Sorry. Yeah. We're, we're so bad at promoting like when we're going to go live. Um, I don't know. Honestly, okay. it's like, it's like, because June couldn't come today, I was even like, man, eh, maybe we should push it to next week. But then I was thinking, yeah, we don't need June. Screw him. <laughs> <laughs> Screw June. We don't need June. I'm just playing. Now we were like, yeah, you know what? People are probably wondering if we're going to do episode three because we promised we would last week. So we will do episode four around this time. And because it's on my channel, I have every, uh, every, um, 
oh, shoot, I'm, I ran out of words tonight. I have every reason to uh, want to self-promote because it'll be my <laughs> channel, frankly. So we'll, we'll try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? Olaf was a good proxy for June. You're right. You know what? Yeah. I think we could just bring Olaf in and just leave June. He's a replacement. Yeah. We don't need June. We need <laughs> Olaf. More Olaf, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. So, so anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you have any last words. No, guys, just watch the news, wash your hands, social distancing, all that stuff. Um, I think it it's really making an impact um to the to the to just look on any map online that you know from from any like reputable site. Look at the maps that are practicing it versus the states that um are not, and you'll see that um those states that are 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 doing better, you know. Um, and so, yeah, just we're all in this together um, and uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel and uh, we'll see you guys there. Yep. Yep. Thank you guys for watching from Dared Fishing, Asia Fish and Olaf. We'll see you guys next time. Ooh. All right. I got to cut this off somehow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, die hard. <laughs>